So let's focus on chemical reactions in aqueous solutions. And in this video, I'm going to talk about electrolytes and non-electrolytes, and uh, also about strong and weak electrolytes. So now first, what are electrolytes? So the definition of electrolyte is, electrolytes conduct electricity and they use ions to do so. Some of the examples are, uh, ionic compounds are good electrolytes, and for example, if you have an ionic compound sodium chloride, it ionizes into sodium ions and chloride ions and it is these sodium ions and chloride ions carry the current and therefore a sodium chloride solution is an electrolyte. And uh, the basic difference between uh, these electrolytes is ionic compounds carry current using ions whereas and that too only in aqueous solutions that is when they are put into water. Whereas metals, they also conduct electricity, but metals conduct electricity using electrons and they can conduct electricity in solid state also. Now non-electrolytes. The definition of non-electrolytes is they do not conduct electricity. So something they do not conduct electricity means they should not have any ions in them. One of the examples given over there is C12H22O11, that is the sugar, the common carbohydrate sugar which we use. It dissolves in water, but it does not ionize to produce the ions and hence a solution of sugar will not conduct electricity and it is a non-electrolyte. So now, among the electrolytes, we have something called as a strong electrolyte. So what is it? An electrolyte that separate into ions or dissociates completely will be a strong electrolyte. For example, our water soluble ionic compounds, that is which is formed between a metal and a non-metal and compounds of ammonium ions are strong electrolytes. For example, a uh, water soluble ionic compound, let's consider potassium chloride, that dissociates completely to potassium ions and Cl- ions. Similarly, ammonium chloride also when put in water dissociates completely into ammonium ion and Cl- minus, uh, ions and hence these are strong electrolytes. So what about water insoluble ionic compound silver chloride. So the strength of an electrolyte is measured by the easiness by which a compound dissociates and not how easy it dissolves. So therefore in aqueous solution there we can have Ag ions and Cl- minus aqueous ions and hence Insoluble ionic compounds are also strong electrolytes. So apart from uh, ionic compounds, we have some more strong electrolytes. Some of the molecular compounds that are strong electrolytes are the seven strong acids. The seven strong acids are HCl, HPr, HI, HNO3, sulfuric acid, HClO3 and HClO4. Because all these dissociate uh, or are completely to give you hydrogen ions and chloride ions. The eight strong bases are also strong electrolytes. Apart from the compound which is mentioned, the ionic compounds and the acids, the eight strong acids are given over there and they also ionize completely to give you, uh, or, or to give you the potassium, say for example, potassium hydroxide gives you potassium ions and hydroxide ions. After the strong electrolytes, now let's proceed on to weak and non-electrolytes. Weak electrolytes separates into few ions and non-electrolytes, it does not give any ions in solution. So molecular compounds, that is covalent compounds, they are formed between two non-metals. They are mostly non-electrolytes or weak electrolytes. Uh, for, uh, the example of a non-electrolyte is CWH22O11 sugar and that of a weak electrolyte is acetic acid. Acetic acid, uh, when it ionizes, it gives you acetate and H positive ion. And notice the double arrow in the middle. That means it is possible that all the ions uh, in the solution can combine uh, back to the acid. And hence, acetic acid is a weak electrolyte. Let's sum up strong, weak and non-electrolytes in one page now. Strong electrolytes. We just saw that all ionic compounds and all compounds of ammonium ions are strong electrolytes. 
added to this are the seven strong acids and the eight strong bases. So apart from all these, all of them should be a weak electrolyte. So an example for a weak electrolyte will be all organic acids and they will have the COOH group in them or weak electrolytes. Now non-electrolytes, all molecular compounds formed between two non-metals. So I'm not including the organic acids here, they will be non-electrolytes. So when predicting a strong weak electrolyte, uh, non-metal oxides have, have to be considered as a special case. Non-metal oxides like SO3 or SO2, they are molecular compounds, you will expect them to be a non-electrolyte. But when they dissolve in water, they form acids. So it is the acids which will determine whether it is a strong or, or a weak electrolyte. For example, SO3 when dissolved in water give you sulfuric acid, H2SO4. And H2SO4 is a strong acid. Hence. SO3 will be a strong electrolyte. However, SO2 when dissolved in water gives you H2SO3 which is a weak acid and SO2 will be a weak electrolyte. So when in case of molecular compounds when oxides are there predict their uh, predict if they are strong or weak based on the acid which they form when dissolved in water. Let's do some questions on uh, strong electrolyte, weak electrolyte and non-electrolytes. So uh, the first one, sulfurous acid is a weak electrolyte because it is not one of the strong acids. K2SO3 will be a strong electrolyte because it's an ionic compound. SO3, looking at it, it's an oxide but I'm saying it's a strong electrolyte because when I dissolve it in water, it gives me sulfuric acid. And since sulfuric acid is a strong electrolyte, SO3 is a strong electrolyte. PbSO4, an ionic compound, therefore is a strong electrolyte. HClO4, a strong acid, strong electrolyte. Ammonium hydroxide is not one of the strong bases, so it's a weak electrolyte. The next one is a molecular compound, it's a non-electrolyte. The next one uh, is an organic acid, therefore weak electrolyte. H2SO4, a strong acid, so strong electrolyte. Aluminum hydroxide will be a weak electrolyte because it's not one of the strong bases. N2O5, again we need to dissolve it in water to find out uh, what kind of an acid it forms. It gives you HNO3 and HNO3 is a strong acid. Therefore, N2O5 is a strong electrolyte. C3HA, a molecular compound non-electrolyte. HClO will be a weak electrolyte because it's not one of the strong acids. And calcium hydroxide, a strong base, will be a strong electrolyte. Ammonium sulfate is an ionic compound and it's a compound of, more than that, it's a compound of ammonium. It's a strong electrolyte. The last one will be a non-electrolyte because it's a molecular compound and it does not have a COOH group nor it is an oxide.